Roam Mithril here once again. No gameplay this time, really, but I wanted to talk a bit about the monsters of Silent Hill 2. There's a lot of symbolism here that I find interesting to discuss, so that's what this video is about. I've gotten a lot of comments over the course of my main Silent Hill 2 run, asking what the monsters are supposed to be, what they represent, things like that, so I hope to cover that here. So the first thing to discuss is the question of just what the monsters of Silent Hill actually are. This is a subject of much debate, and one for which Silent Hill isn't exactly quick to provide answers. There are several theories on the matter, ranging from the creatures being souls trapped by the Otherworld, to them actually being innocent human beings, only seen as monsters by the protagonist. Personally, I discard that theory out of hand, as the monsters are always aggressive. They never avoid your character or treat them like they aren't there, an innocent bystander would just go about their business rather than moving in to attack. A mannequin out mowing the lawn, a lying figure stepping out to get the morning paper... Uh, you never really see that. Look at the first air screamer that attacks Harry Mason. It actually charges through the window of the Cafe 5-2 to two to get at Harry. And just what kind of human would attack by headbutting you while flying? Even if you allow for things like groaners to be pet dogs running around, I highly doubt some sort of songbird would be doing quite that much damage. It's also notable that visitors to Silent Hill do run across other humans and see them as such. No one in Silent Hill has seen monsters and nothing but monsters. Another thing that seems to point to the monsters are really people theory being in question is Laura. Consider her meeting with James in the first floor of Brookhaven Hospital. As they leave the room with the teddy bears, James remarks that he's amazed Laura doesn't even have a scratch on her, yet Laura seems confused by this, wondering why she should be injured. One can also note, not only did Laura beat James to the Lakeview Hotel, but the only thing she complains about is being tired of walking. Nothing about jumping down five or six holes, watery labyrinths, annoying face puzzles, nothing. That's because the town has no effect on her. Let's compare her to the other three major visitors to the town. James, he obviously has his own troubles, having killed his wife and mentally blocked this from his memory, unable to deal with it. Eddie has possibly killed people, or at the very least shot them, he has admitted that much, simply due to being teased. The fact that he ran, it shows that he knows he did something wrong, though he finally comes to deny that, losing his mind and believing what he did was right, rationalizing his murderous rage with the excuse of they had it coming. As for Angela, she's clearly broken beyond repair, poor girl. Beaten and raped by her father, but told by her mother that she deserves it. Upon killing her father in self-defense, she couldn't deal with this, believing she was in the wrong and unable to forgive herself for it. All three of them, they seem to confirm seeing monsters. James obviously is encountering them as we have to fight them off. Eddie, during his charming introduction at the toilet, does mention seeing freaky monsters, he just doesn't know this pyramid guy that James mentioned. As for Angela, while she never outright states that she's seen the monsters, she is the one to first mention that the town is dangerous, and during the encounter in the labyrinth, she does deliver the finishing blow to the abstract daddy that was attacking her, so she obviously did see it. Laura, on the other hand? She's just there looking for a friend. Silent Hill did not call her. She just remembered Mary talking about Silent Hill a lot, and wanted to see her again, not knowing that she was even dead. After all, Mary's letter to her, it simply said she would receive it after I'm gone. It didn't say anything about death. Laura likely just thought she meant she was leaving the hospital. The thing is, as much of a brat as Laura can be sometimes, she really is just an innocent child. She doesn't have the sheer emotional baggage and personal trauma of the other characters. Thus, the town has no hold over her. When she locked James in the room with flesh lips, she thought she was just playing a joke. She didn't see the monsters. She doesn't know anything about them, probably doesn't see any of the terrible sights the other characters witness. She probably isn't even stopped by the various pitfalls and dead ends presented to James. After all, we don't even see Laura at all, from the time that we see her leaving Brookhaven Hospital until we get to the cafe at Lakeview Hotel. It's likely she was given a far more direct route to get there. However, one thing worth noting is she never says she's met anyone else. 
If I were in Laura's position, I'd certainly look for someone more stable than James or Eddie to talk to. Thus, to Laura, the town is probably perfectly normal. No blood, no monsters, no dead ends. It just happens to be empty and abandoned. The most basic explanation for the monsters, and the one I tend to go with, is that the monsters of Silent Hill are, in quite a literal sense, personal demons. The power of the town itself creates them, manifesting them from the powerful psyches of major players within the town. It isn't, however, always the protagonist that creates these monsters. For example, in the case of the original game, Harry isn't seeing his own demons. He was seeing the personal demons of Alessa Gillespie. In the case of Silent Hill 2, however, we're definitely seeing James's mental issues in monstrous forms, and that's what I plan to discuss in this video. So, since there's still some extra time at the end of this one, I decided to go ahead and show the intro to the game, the one I didn't want to show last time because it does kind of spoil a few things. Just have to sit on the title screen for a little while and it'll come up. James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? So right from the start, it seems to hint at the confusion between Maria and Mary. There's also that shadowy scene of James seeming to carry a body away. That can be rather telling and rather strange to consider, not knowing anything going in. It even goes ahead and seems to show Eddie losing his mind.
for you, James. See? I'm real. So, what spoilers are there are admittedly fairly minimal, but enough that it does give away some rather interesting scenes from the game, so I didn't want to show that before actually doing my main run of the game. But I did feel it important to go ahead and show that now. So, anyway, uh, yeah, the rest of the symbolism analysis, that'll be coming up soon. <laughs>